Hi folks, welcome to Ashton's Cars and today I am with Lloyd who is the owner of this fantastic vehicle we've got here which is a, a custom built motorhome. Lloyd, tell me probably a little bit more about it. Sure. So this is Daphne. Daphne is uh, a DAF, funny enough. Um, so it's based on a DAF LF45 which is every seven and a half ton truck you see on the road pretty much is a DAF LF45 so they're really common. Parts are easy to get. Um, this is a an automatic 4.4 litre engine, um, 59,000 on the clock, so low mileage. It was originally a library bus in air with East Ayrshire Council. Um, it's been converted about four years now. I didn't do the conversion, I bought it off the person who did convert it. Um, and we'll show you a little bit more as we go around. What, just uh, so the people know, what sort of license do I need to drive one of these? So in order to drive this, you'll need a, a C1 um, endorsement on your license, which isn't a class one. It's a seven and a half ton endorsement. If you passed your test before or it during 1997, you'll need to check. But prior to 97, you would have got a C1 endorsement automatically. If not, you can go and do one fairly cheaply for about 1,500 pounds, 2,000 pounds at the nearest uh, test centre. But yeah, C1, which is a, a seven and a half ton endorsement. And it's pretty easy to drive. It's dead simple, automatic gearbox, so really, really easy. Does about 18 to the gallon, 18 to 20, got cruise control. Um, and just, yeah, very, very nice vehicle to drive. So a little bit more about Daphne. Um, she is just over, uh, she's sorry, eight meters, 8.3 meters long, 2.5 meters wide with the mirrors folded in. With the mirrors out, she's roughly three metres wide. Um, and I'll just show you a little bit. Um, so we've got driver's door with a sliding window uh, and foot step there to access. We come along, we've got the starter batteries in here. Two 12 volt batteries, so it's a 24 volt system. Diesel filler in here. And this is storage for the grey water tank because there's not a built in grey water tank. So when you set up on side, you can slide your grey water tank underneath. In here we've got a Victron inverter, it's a big beastie, a 24 volt, 3 kilowatt inverter Victron, which is one of the best you can get. And the model number is um, it's a 24 volt, 3 kilowatt, 70 Victron. And as we come along, um, in the back here, this, we've, got, we, we've got our diesel uh, hot air blown heating. As we come around the back, um, she's fitted with a tow bar. We've never used it. I don't know why it's got a tow bar on it. I don't think the last owners towed anything with it. So I don't know whether the council, when she was a library bus, put one on there, but we certainly haven't towed with it and, and uh, never used it. There is a boot. Um, we'll show you a photo of that a bit later on. As we come around, we've got a uh, 230 hookup. Um, the lead for this is stored in the boot. And then alongside that, there's a 230 volt socket so that if you had your awning set up or you wanted to power something outdoors, you can do that. And the awning comes out here, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's yeah, a manual so awning, which winds out. out. It's a Fiamma awning, um, F45S, and we've got the handle inside and that winds out with the legs uh, to go with it. And then here we've got the water filler. This is where we fill our water up. And then it's fitted with a gas low system. So you basically pull up to a petrol pump uh, that does LPG, any petrol station that does LPG, and you can refill here at LPG rates rather than have to get Caligas bottles, which is amazing. That works out really, really well. And then in here, you've got your Thetford cassette toilet. And in here, I'll show you the gas low system. This is a little bit tricky to open, but you can see your two gas low bottles in there. So you just fill those up using the petrol pump. And then further along on this side, we've got the Ad Blue filler. So this is um, the diesel additive that makes it cleaner and I think it makes it a Euro 4, but we'll have to check on that on the logbook. But yeah, that's the AdBlue that goes in with the diesel. It's about every four tanks of diesel, you fill the AdBlue tank up. Costs about £18 to fill up to the grid. And how much does it cost to fill the tank? Do you know how much roughly? It's not a massive tank on it. We pay about £130 to fill it up. That's fantastic. That's not bad at all. Not too bad. Not too about the same bad. as a Range Rover. Yeah. <laughs>
So we've Lloyd aboard this fantastic 2011, what is essentially a live-in vehicle. Um, I was massively impressed and really I just wanted to get inside, join him in the cabin and go through some more details of it. So this is the cab of Daphne. We've got cruise control settings on here. Um, does speed limiter and cruise control. And then this side we've got the exhaust to brake for um, if you're going down a steep hill. You can switch that on and it uses engine braking, saves on uh, wear on the on the brake system. Light control, the handbrake here. Uh, it is fitted with air suspension, so you can control the height of the front and the rear suspension, which is useful if you're going up any steep slopes to get onto campsites, etc. Um, we It is fitted with a tachograph. The tachograph was calibrated for the MOT this year. You don't ever need to, to use it, it's just got to be fitted with it because all the systems um, like the cruise control, the speedometer, it all works by the tachograph, so it needs to stay fitted. But there's no need to have a tachograph card or anything like that if you're not driving it for commercial purposes. Um, mileage, as you can see on the clock, is uh, 59,099 miles. So um, that matches up. The tachograph works in kilometres, but if you work it out, they, they match exactly. Um, uh, what else can I tell you? We've got an Android head which does um, Bluetooth telephone, it does your sat nav and various other things. You can hook a reversing camera up. It is wired for a reversing camera, but the reversing camera on here at the moment is faulty. So we just need to change that at some point if you wanted to use it. The monitor's there, it's just a case to change the camera out on the back. Um, dab radio on the Android head and all the usual stuff you get with a typical, with a typical uh, Android. And we've got USB chargers here, um, hazard lights and your fog lights and, and usual fittings. And then you've got your automatic fox here. So if you can see the selector, you've got the option of, um, it's got basically neutral at the moment, drive tortoise and reverse and tortoise. So the tortoise mode just puts you in crawl when you're, if you want to go forward crawling or reversing crawling. This uh, button here switches it from manual to automatic. So if you wanted to operate it manually, you can flick that switch and then you use this switch to switch your gears up and down. And that's it pretty much for the cab. We've got some um, additional fans that we put in here that we just run off the off the 12 volt um, cigarette lighter sockets either side. How many does it seat? Is it a two seater? It's or? a two seater, yeah. There's yes, belt two seats seater. for two. Fantastic. But obviously a lot more space in the back for entertaining once you, uh, once you arrive at Absolutely. your destination. So we've made a little bit of a modification here. This is a double bed that pulls out. So if you wanted to sleep four, you potentially could. This um, this will pull right out and that forms a double bed. We tend to use it more for sitting it as a sitting area. So we've put this board in uh, across here so we can sit with our legs up and watch the TV that's here. TV's a 12 volt TV. Remote control just plugs into the 12 volt accessories. Um, you, we've got 24 and 12 volt in the van. So you can run, you don't have to buy expensive 24 volt accessories, you can buy 12 volt accessories and they'll run on the 12 volt that we've got wired around it. This board is great for, for because you can cross from the front to the back, but also weirdly the cushions fit perfectly into an infill. So it was just coincidence that that worked out, that worked out well. So up here we've got loads of storage. So there's a table up here that the legs fold down on and you can set that, that storage up. This is one of the cushions that fits in the infill here. Um, We've some bags of storage there. You've got uh, some wiring in this area here. Sockets, two, the 240 volt sockets that work off the inverter with USB sockets in them. Um, here That's we've got. Uh, that... you, these have got safety clips on just to stop them coming right. up on you. Wow. Okay. So first aid kit and some of the documentation for the appliances in there. Fantastic. This side, um, don't know whether you've seen this, these sorts of aerials before. Um, I just put the 12 volt. 12 volts on but that's, these that's all down there the controls for all the electrics that's your electrics pretty much down there fantastic so the way this tv aerial works is you unscrew it push the tv aerial up and then you use this you basically turn this until your light goes green which it might not because we're in the welsh valleys <laughs> but amber is normally you normally get um a reception even on amber but the, that'll tell you which angle the which angle is best to get the tv signal 
so it's going to be amber would be here that would be our closest signal and then you can wind uh, this and that alters the sort of pitch of the aerial as well until you get the best signal and then you know that that's the best and you can tune your tune your tv in fantastic just pull that down and one thing I noticed when I'm in here with you, like, there's loads of light flooding into here from these skylights. Yeah, so these skylights. These massive skylights. And they it. open as well, so they actually just push to open. That so, is fantastic. It's just such a neat feature that you just don't get on all seven and a half ton motorhomes, isn't it? No, that's right. Um, here we've got combi boiler, would you believe? So I didn't know they existed for, uh, for off-grid for off campers, but yeah, this gives you instant hot water. Um, there is a... Uh, a fake log burner there that runs off the 240 just for, to give you a bit of light in the boot there's also a calagas version so although the, the van is fitted with diesel heating if some people like the um, electric or if you're short on diesel then you can put your gas you can put your gas calagas fire in there um, being a library bus as you'd expect it's got good lights oh, wow <laughs> um, plenty of storage in here microwave that runs off the um, inverter so that runs off the 240 inverter and then you've got your cutlery drawers these um, sort of kid locks are brilliant for, for keeping your doors shut uh, when you're traveling we've got uh, a sink and a two burner gas hob here fantastic uh, this is for the bin so you put your carrier bags there and recycle those and then this is a, a really useful feature so this is a larder unit and it pulls out to give you plenty wow. of shelving. It's got more storage than some houses, <laughs> isn't it? And I'll just show you the fridge and then we'll move to the bathroom. So I've just got this propped open to stop uh, any mold forming in there, but you've got fridge with a freezer compartment. And then there's a compartment at the bottom for your bottles. So plenty of room for wine in there. That runs off electric hookup, um, off the gas, or off the battery so there's three different ways you can run that so into the bathroom and we've got a uh, shower here so this is uh, for what they call a sailor's shower so you can flick this on not use too much water flick it off and then put it back in the container got your tap there to control the temperature extractor fan here um, waterproof toilet roll holder so don't get your toilet toilet paper damaged and then we've got uh, a fitted toilet in there with a, a cabinet above to store the toiletries that's fantastic and that toilet swivels around your side as well doesn't it it's so. a swiveler yeah it's just so you can get in the right uh, in the right that's location brilliant. absolutely brilliant okay moving on to the towel rail on the back of the door and then coming through into the bedroom so we've got tv on the wall just there again that's a 12 volt tv um, we've got a sink in here this is a king size bed so it's actually a, a king size mattress on here uh, sink there case place underneath for your toiletries this ladder moves out of the way so you can get into that into that little storage space there there's also a shaving mirror on the wall just there uh, sorry shave, a mirror and a, a light for shaving yeah. as well as your usual storage cabinets here and some cupboards just in there. Sorry, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And a couple of drawers. Absolutely vast, isn't it? I mean, it's proper off-grid living, isn't it? You, yeah, you couldn't technically, I guess, live in this you vehicle can. all well, your own. Um, We've got a blackout blind here as well, because obviously with it being the bedroom. So you can shut the curtains. The window at the back has got the blind that comes down. It comes up in this case. Um, and we've got the blackout blind that comes across there. Tremendous. Tremendous. That's fantastic. Carbon monoxide alarm, smoke detector in the main part, um, and I think that's it. One of the things with living vehicles like is storage, isn't it, and having lots of it. Yes, and, and that's one thing that we're not short of here. <laughs> so huge, absolutely huge. This is sort of halved, if you look at the size of the bed, half of it is what you can access from the rear, Yeah. and the other half is partitioned off under the bed so you can access it from inside. So essentially you can have your outdoor gear yeah, and your indoor we... gear separately, it doesn't get damp and affect the inside here. yeah but also security we we bought a couple of electric scooters yeah. that we were using for going into town or wherever we were staying and i was just a little bit nervous about leaving them although we've never had any trouble 
we put them under here rather than leave them accessible from the rear so that if anybody did break in they, they wouldn't be able to get them but under there they're great and they're easy to get in and out the, the aperture's big enough to get in and out easily so bags of storage in here so you can see the sink running here so hot and cold just literally by turning this swaps it from hot to cold you can hear the boiler firing up i've got the gas turned off at the minute so it won't fire up but you can hear it trying to trying to click into action there and then here we've got uh, a two burner hob that works off the gas flow system i showed you and the thing i forgot to show you earlier in the video was the oven here so we have got a proper full size well not full size but a decent sized oven and you can use that as an oven or a grill with the it's got the piezo starter there fantastic Having been in many, many camper vans over the years and enjoyed um, sort of camper vans and van life myself, I really am impressed with this vehicle. I mean, the, the storage solutions that it's got, the equipment that it's got on board, make it um, the perfect vehicle for someone who wants to have it as a, either a live-in vehicle or do some serious touring, some continental touring possibly. The space that you have on offer, which is so important in these vehicles, um, is unbeatable, especially with the, the space under the bed for storage and an additional boot at the back. It really is king of the road. Yes, it's over 27 feet long. It's a big vehicle. Um, so obviously you do need to make sure that you are able to drive such a thing before you go purchasing it. But if you are, well, I know you're not going to be disappointed. This is a one-off, a completely bespoke vehicle, which is essentially king of the road. So I hope it's been of interest to you. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Please give us a like, share, subscribe to our channel, and hit those notifications. You'll be kept abreast of new cars we've got coming in stock and more car buying advice and special vehicles like this of interest that we will be doing reviews of. Thanks for watching.